Hey guys, so since about Sunday afternoon, we've had quite an earthquake swarm going along the North Atlantic Ridge where the two tectonic plates are separating from each other and that goes right through Iceland. But what is stunning is what's going on on the Reykjanes Peninsula with the earthquakes. So we had two or three earthquakes above magnitude three, three earthquakes at the Eldi area, that's a rock 15 kilometers off the coast of Grindavik, so to speak, but on the North Atlantic Ridge. And now we had a 3.2, about a 3.2 magnitude earthquake in the Klaifavatn area, also along the North Atlantic Ridge, and that's in the Krizovik system. That's a well-known volcanic system, and that's the one that also has sent lava flows towards the Reykjavik suburb area in the very, very past, when there haven't been any suburbs yet, but we know no, the Reykjanes Peninsula is waking up from an 800 year sleep and so it's possible that something's going to happen there and we know the magma chamber underneath Swartzengi and the Blue Lagoon is about as full as it can get it's over 12 million cubic meters and we've seen in the past when it had between 8 million and 13 million cubic meters it was sending out magma on its way to cause an intrusion or an eruption and the stunning thing right now is we do have an eruption going since March 16th already. So while that eruption should relieve some pressure, that magma chamber has filled up again to maximum capacity. And that is stunning and that is very, very unusual. And they haven't seen anything like this before in Iceland or all over the world. And that's why everyone is watching so closely. What is going to happen now? Will we see the current eruption grow again, increase? Will we see a new eruption? Will we see a new fissure opening along that existing eruption? Some experts say it could get as long as three kilometers that it could erupt there so look at that map where this earthquake is located so that's the lake Klaifar Vatten in the Krizovik system and what is that lake? Klaifa Vatten is the largest lake on the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland and it's situated on the southern part of the Reykjanes Peninsula and it is located right on that fissure zone that forms the mid-Atlantic ridge so the lake has no visible water coming in and coming out as most of the water comes and leaves underground. It has a depth of around 97 meters that's 318 feet and it spans an area of around eight square kilometers. That lake is surrounded by rugged volcanic landscapes and that already tell you that there is activity, that there is magmatic activity close by. So the water levels of that lake can change dramatically if there is seismic activity. So there is geothermal energy bubbling beneath the surface and the volcanic activity nearby and underneath creates like steaming hot springs in this area and fumaroles like we've talked about this at the Campi Fligre in Italy that's these steam clouds that are coming out of the ground sometimes with sulfur gases so that's an indication there is something going on so there is geothermal power hidden underground and in the past when there were earthquakes they have caused the lake to shrink so that's revealing the power of these volcanic forces that are at play in this area. So overall, if you go to that area, it feels very rugged, very wild. And it's basically, this is what you see all over Iceland, this dynamic geology. So this is Klaifar Vatn, and there is magma underneath Klaifar Vatn. So it is possible that there could be an eruption at Klaifa Vatten, which would be a problem because wa water and magma is very, very explosive. But, you know, we will have to see. Also, the Krizovik volcanic system has been dormant for 800 years, but the whole Reykjanes Peninsula did wake up from that 800 year sleep and it's rumbling now everywhere as you can see on the map here so not only where we have the current eruptions there's other areas as well there's Barda Bungba there is Klaifa Vatten there is Vatna Yakul so that's why the scientists are monitoring everything and they're worried about Grindavik right now why are they worried about Grindavik because the lava carpet that has formed by the eruption that is 
basically going on since March 16th. The lava has built on top of each other. Now the lava carpet is higher than the defense walls that they have built around Grindavik. You can see it here in that map. So it's up to four meters, 12 feet higher than the existing defense walls. And it has already breached these defense walls with a very slow moving, grinding lava because this was coming from like an underground tunnel that was still being fed by the current eruption. So there was no visible like glowing red, yellow river coming from the current eruption. This was going underground under the solidified current lava carpet and it was pushing against the defense walls of Grindavik in the northeast and lifting up there, coming up and breaching that defense wall. It wasn't flowing very fast, but the problem is since that magma chamber under Swartzangi and the Blue Lagoon is full to the most and could do anything right now without little warning because all the tunnels to go to the eruption site are there then we have that new lava coming out, which is super fast and super liquid. And that could threaten Grindavik again. It could flow on top of the current lava carpet, flow fast towards Grindavik, and then breach these defense walls. That's why they have been waiting for the go of the government to give them the green light that they could build more defense walls. So... Where do they want to build more defense walls? Well, if you look at that picture, there's not many areas where you could build because basically the existing defense walls, they're completely surrounded by the current lava carpet and that's still hot. So you can't go and drive an excavator or something on top of that and build on top of that. So that's why. They want to be prepared. Let's say we have a new forceful eruption or this current eruption will get new strength by another magma influx from that full magma chamber. Then let's say that liquid fast lava breaches the current defense walls. They want to make a second row of defense walls to divert the breached lava away from the town of Grindavik. So they're thinking right now that they would build these defense walls only about five meters high to divert them. And the good thing is, Monday afternoon, they did get the green light from the government. The cost is high. It's about 250 million Icelandic kronas. So, but they want to protect the settlement. They want to protect Grindavik. So the work has started. They say, we don't know how long it will take us, but their estimate is that it will take them at least three weeks. So guys, here's the problem. We're waiting for something to happen any second without any warning. And then the lava is going at it. So will they be in time? I doubt it. Because if you look at the earthquake activity, so what we've seen at LD, check out my video about that. It's very, very interesting. Is that experts are saying, well, this could be related to that massive increase in the magma chamber underneath Swartzangi. So there's tensions building up and that could be a sign of some kind of tension release. So could this magnitude 3.2 earthquake at Klaifa Vatten that also came with other earthquakes that were quite in the high range. Could that be related? Because that magma chamber is putting pressure on the ground around it. Could that all be related? And I have to tell you guys, in the last events, we haven't seen that many tall sized earthquakes. We have seen micro seismic earthquake swarms. On November 10th, they were higher, but it is quite significant to see now just basically in a, in a one day time frame from Sunday evening and then Monday, these magnitude three earthquakes and then like about 38 earthquakes in the range of two. So it's it shows there's something bigger going on and as i always say don't expect like six or seven magnitude earthquakes like when you have subduction zones earthquakes where two tectonic plates are meeting each other moving towards each other here the tectonic plates are moving away from each other creating a space from magma from underneath to come to the surface so 
it is rumbling and I think we will see something very, very soon. And these fraggles, these contractors are at it again. I mean, they're working right in the danger zone because there is this magma dike that has been formed on November 10th, 15 kilometers long from the magma chamber. Magma was going, forming, grinding that 15 kilometer long dike. That's why there were quite a few earthquake swarms and the rumbling was big in Grindavik. So it's going through Grindavik and along that dike, we are seeing these eruptions and intrusions. It is not out of the picture that there could be an eruption inside Grindavik, inside the defense walls. We've seen this in January. It came by surprise so close to Grindavik, basically in Grindavik, burning down three homes. If it erupts there again, no defense wall will do anything. And of course, this raises the question that does it still make sense to protect Grindavik and spend that much money? I mean, the government is buying out the homes, giving cash to the residents. It's grinding slow. Not much has happened, but it's on its way so that the residents can move away. So does it still make sense to pump more money into this? Even if there is no lava flow that's hurting the town, underneath the town, there's probably like a Swiss cheese. There's so many fissures and magma tunnels and fissures have wide and sudden sinkholes. The whole thing could collapse eventually. Maybe not now, but who knows? in the events of time because with every more rumbling and shaking this is moving something's forming right so does it still make sense well i think they will figure out the question over time with every event that keeps occurring so we had events since the november 10th magma dike had formed basically every three to four weeks that something happened an eruption or an intrusion because that magma chamber keeps filling up again after the eruption fills up again and right now it is weird we have the eruption and it didn't wait for the eruption to die down until it started filling up again it was filling up while we see the eruption so there's no signs that this deeper magma reservoir is running out of power and that these events on the Rikianis peninsula could end anytime soon so guys stay tuned with me please subscribe if you haven't yet for all the latest news and please give this video a like to help my channel a little bit and thank you guys for your ongoing support on my buy me a coffee website i really need the coffee right now <laughs> not getting too much sleep thank you so much for the supers and your wonderful comments thank you so much i see you in the next one it won't be long i promise that bye bye